I'm going to show you how I made this. The thing about Marketplace right now, and I think public radio in general, I think maybe NPR has to catch up to this, is that we have a point of view. We don't ha it does not mean you're biased to have a point of view. And I think it is just plain and simple fact to say that the economy serves some, but not all. Now, I don't necessarily love the specific design of this, but it's got all of the elements that I think that you want in a shareable audio graphic that's designed to help people share a clip from a, a podcast or a radio show. It's got this waveform graphic here at the top. This, what this does is it communicates to someone who's watching this unmuted autoplay that there is audio here to listen to if you want to unmute it. It has captions here that uh, allow someone who is watching it on muted autoplay to consume it nonetheless. It's got an attribution. It's got a photo of the person who is speaking. I think that's important. And it's got my logo, which is important for self-promotion. Um, it looks pretty good over here in Facebook, too. All right. So here's how I did this. Surprisingly easy. Did it in Adobe After Effects. And here's how we do it. We go up to composition here in Adobe After Effects and we say new composition. And here's the preset that I would recommend using HDTV 720-2997. Uh, a number of these you know, different presets would work just fine, uh, but what uh, you really wanna look for is a preset that is going to give you an aspect ratio of 16 to nine. This is the standard widescreen video aspect ratio. It looks good in Twitter, whether you're looking at it on mobile or desktop, it looks good in Facebook. It wouldn't look good in Instagram, unfortunately, but uh, Twitter and Facebook, it looks really good in. So that's what we're going to go with. Go ahead and say OK. And I've created my composition. Now I'm going to bring in my audio clip that I've already pulled. And I'm going to go up to file and say import file and find my audio clip, which is right here. OK, I have imported my audio clip. Um, once I have done that, I can drag it into my project down here, right? And it has inserted it into my timeline right here. Now, it, it doesn't look like an audio file. That's just because it's minimized. If I go over here and I hit that little triangle doohickey and expand, hit that little triangle doohickey and expand, I can say expand the waveform and there's my 22 second audio clip looking all fine. All right. Next thing I'm gonna do is create the waveform animation. You're gonna be amazed at how easy this is. I'm gonna go up to layer and say new. I'm gonna create a new solid layer. And it's gonna to default to a white layer that matches the, the size and aspect ratio of what you've already got. That's fine, you can change the color later if you want to. Okay. Now, here is that white solid. I'm gonna make sure that's selected, and then I wanna add an effect to it. And I do that by going up to this tab right here that says Effect Controls, right? Now I'm in the Effect Controls tab for this element, which is this white screen. I'm gonna create the effect now by going up to the Effect menu, Generate Audio Waveform. It is that easy, okay. Now, a couple of things I wanna do here. I need to tell this effect where to get its information from, where to get its audio information from in order to generate the waveform animation. And I do that by going to this drop-down menu and selecting the audio clip that I want it to link up to, which is Andrea Audiogram Clip 1. Done? Okay. Uh, and then the other thing that I'm gonna do while I'm here is hit this box that says Composite on Original. That means that this, uh, line will then lay over on top of anything that is below it, like that white background, right? Now, if I hit play just by hitting the space bar, you can see that waveform is now being generated in relation to the uh, audio down below. You're not hearing the audio, and I'll explain why a little bit later. Just hold that thought. Okay, so I'm gonna to wanna to make some more changes to this, but for right now, I'm just gonna sort of move it generally where I want it. Um, to recreate that design I had before, I'm gonna move it up to the top, but you could obviously put this anywhere that your heart desires. Okay, all right, so there is my waveform animation.
Boom, that easy. All right, next element I want to bring in is my podcast logo. I'm going to do that by going up to File, Import, uh, Pub Logo, Pub Logo Transparent, Open. There it is, and I can drag that over into my composition now. And it's too big, I can resize it. I'm going to hold down Shift so that the aspect ratio is steady. And let's say that that looks good. Put it in the corner, generally where I want it. Okay. Now I'm gonna bring in my photo. File, import, uh, Andrea. This one is the one that I want. Okay, it's over here. I can just drag it again over into my composition and she's way too big. So I'm going to hold down shift and resize her generally where I want her, which is about yay big. Put her over into the corner there. Boom. Now I want to put in the text that is going to uh, serve as the attribution. Um, and I just do that by going up and hitting this T button up here, this text button. Click. And her name is Andrea Seabrook. Her title is DC. C. Bureau Chief of Market Place. Okay, some changes I wanna make. I want it to be justified to the right and I can do that by just selecting it and I've got paragraph controls down here that are pretty familiar and I can just say align that to the right. Awesome, move it back generally where I want it. Oh, I misspelled her name, look at that. Seekbrook, no, just Seabrook, okay. Uh, colors. Um, I want to work with uh, a color palette that's just being drawn from the colors of my logo here. Um, it automatically pulled the gray color from the gray color on uh, the mic stand there. I'm going to make her title orange to set it apart. I'm going to match it to that orange and I can do that simply by selecting that text and then going up to the eyedropper here and touching it to the gold and now it matches. Boom. Nice. And while I'm here, I'll italicize the show title because it's a show title. Done. Okay. Now, speaking of color palette, let's get this waveform animation to match the color palette that I have here. Um, and in order to do that, I need to go back to the white solid element. Remember that waveform is an effect on this white solid block. I'm gonna select that go up to the effects control tab, and here are all my effects controls. Now, the way that After Effects does this effect, um, it has two colors, it's two-toned. It has an inside color and an outside color. Um, I don't really want two tones, so what I'm just gonna do is I'm going to select the eyedropper on the inside color and touch it to the orange, because I want it to be this orange. And then for the outside color, I'm just gonna hit that eyedropper and touch it to the white just to basically make it disappear, okay? Now I've got a waveform that matches the orange color that I've got otherwise in my palette here. Um, now you can change how this looks in, oops, what just happened? Oh, there we go. Now you can change how this looks in any number of ways. Uh, you can change the thickness here Check that out, yeah. You can change its height, make it taller. I'll make it a lot taller, just to show you. Look at that. <laughs> I'll bring it back to where I want it. Okay, yeah, a little taller, 150. Um, you can change it from looking like an analog line to looking more like a digital readout, yeah. There's a cool little dots thing here. That's neat. I like the digital. You can change how fast the uh, waveform scrolls across the screen by going up to audio duration. Um, if you make this really short, I'll make it super short, what happens is, is it doesn't really look like audio scrolling, it looks like audio kind of pulsing at you, which kind of like a little bit better. See that? It's just sort of, it's really just moving so fast across the screen 
that you're not even seeing it scrolling. It just kind of looks like it's pulsing at you. Um, I think that's pretty neat. You can play with this a million ways, um, and we'll just call that good enough for now. And in fact, you could at this stage call it good enough on the entire thing. Um, the next step that I'm gonna do now is putting in my captions. A lot of people don't do captions, and I understand why, because as, as you're about to see, it's kind of laborious, it's a lot of work, but I really do think it's important. I don't, you know, this is, it's just like any other social video. You have to make it consumable in muted autoplay if you want those autoplays to count for anything. So what I've done in terms of uh, doing my captions is I've just, in a word file here, um, I've transcribed the clip and I've broken it out into clauses um, because I'm gonna have each of these clauses appear individually in succession on the screen. I suppose I could just stick the entire text up uh, at once, but A, that would mean the text would have to be too small to read, and B, it would make for uh, an image that wasn't dynamic. I want this image to be changing so that it catches the eye, right? Um, so I want the text to be constantly changing, so I've broken it out into clauses. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, select my first clause right there, and copy it. I'm gonna go in here. Now if I were to just drop in the text tool here, uh, and paste in my text, it, it, it would take up the entire width of the composition on my longer clauses. The text would run into Andrea's face here. I don't want that to happen. I want it to be confined to this general area right here. And I can do that by taking the text tool, clicking, and then dragging. And I'm creating a box, right, where I'm, uh, all of my text is gonna be confined to this box now. Now I'm just gonna paste in my text and there it is. Look at that. Adjust its position a little bit. Boom. All right. So that is my caption for my first little bit of speech, which is right down here. You can see it in my waveform. What I need to do is limit it so that it only displays during that chunk of speech. Uh, and I do that by going, finding it on the timeline. There's that caption on the timeline. And I'm gonna drag its border so that it only displays on that first chunk of speech, which I can see right there in my waveform, okay? Now I need to create my next caption. And I do that by selecting this thing right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate it. I'm just gonna, I suppose it's an edit, duplicate. I usually do the keystroke. I've just duplicated it. That way, um, my next caption will be identical in every way. The position of the box will be the same. The text will be the same. Uh, here it is. Now, I've got two text boxes on top of each other. I'm gonna take this one and move its position down because it's the caption for the next little bit of speech, right? Now I can see it there. And I now need to put in the copy, which is the second clause right here, okay? Take that, delete, and paste. And there it is, okay? Now I'm gonna play this back, and I'm gonna play it back with sound this time. I told you before that you aren't hearing sound as I hit the space bar here to play this. Um, that's because in order for Adobe After Effects to give you sound, it needs to actually render the video uh, in order to play that for you. And you do that by going over to the preview window, which ooh, I think I have it closed. Window, preview, there it is, okay. And see this little button right here? This is the play button. Um, when I hit play on this, what it's gonna do is it's going to render out the entire video and you can see the rendering progress there with that green line, right? So it's rendering, it's rendering, it's rendering. As soon as it's done rendering, you're gonna see it actually play with audio. The thing about Marketplace right now, and I think public radio in general, I think maybe NPR has to catch up to this. Okay, you get the idea? Now if I wanted to do my next clause of, uh, of subtitle, I would select the previous one, duplicate it. I just did the keystroke that time, uh, Apple D. Move it down and copy my next bit of copy in. Right. 
paste, done. Okay, I'm not gonna do that all for you now. As you can see, it's a little bit of a laborious process, but that's how it works. Now I'm gonna cover how you export this as a video. Um, the process is a, little, is a little bit weird in After Effects. Go up to File, and you say Export, Add to Render Queue. <laughs> um, sure, awesome. Now you have your Render Queue down here. Uh, this is where you now will set the format of the video that you're gonna export this as, um, where it says Lossless, Output Module Lossless. You click on that, and it's gonna give you some options. It's defaulting to a QuickTime video, a, a .mov. You don't wanna use that. Uh, Twitter will not recognize it. Facebook will be able to wrap its brain around it, but it'll also just be a, an unnecessarily large file. What you wanna do is an MP4. Uh, Twitter only recognizes MP4, at least on the desktop application. And I'm gonna get that format by clicking on this drop-down menu. And you might think that if you wanted an MP4, you would say MPEG-4, but in fact, that's not what you wanna use. You wanna use H.264, which is the uh, sort of most standard uh, MP4 encoder format. H.264, this is the one that you want, trust me. Select that. Now, uh, before we can get out of here, we have to notice that audio output is not checked. <laughs> um, its default is set to not export any audio. Uh, we want audio, so I'm gonna check that, and I'm gonna say, yes, give me some audio output. Um, I don't need it to be stereo, it can just be mono. This is a, a mono audio file. Those other settings are good. Now I'm gonna say, okay, all right. And then here, if I click on this, I can change the name of my thing, and I'll call it the Andrea Demo Clip. And I can determine its location too. It's gonna to go to my desktop. I'll hit save. And then once I've done all of that, I can hit this render button. And you can see the progress bar. It is rendering. My video is unfinished, obviously, but finished enough for you to get the idea. And there it is right there. I could open it up in QuickTime, but I can't do that for you because I'm using QuickTime right now in order to uh, record this screen capture. Um, so that's it. Now that might seem like we did like a lot of work just then, but the thing to bear in mind is, is that now that I've created this, I can use this in a, in a template for future clips, right? Um, I can use it as a template rather for future clips. I can just bring in the new piece of audio that I want and I don't have to redo all of these design elements. My logo is there, my colors are all set. I just have to change the picture and the text and the sound. So that's the method. Um, good luck with it.